I wasn't planning on making a review of this two-ton shop crane. There are a number of videos on it already, but they are mostly just assembly videos. The gist is that you get what you pay for. This was around $180 before tax with the current coupon promotion. Firstly, the assembly instructions are terrible. I found the parts diagram to be more helpful and in some cases more accurate. More on that later. Be sure to install the smaller diameter wheels in the threaded holes and the larger diameter wheels in the through holes. I didn't realize they were different sizes and had to redo them. Unlike some others, I find the casters to be acceptable. I prefer that the crane with load doesn't want to roll with minimal force. The crane was used on my driveway with more than 300 pounds load and went over rough concrete and cracks with little difficulty. I don't understand why half of the tubing was threaded and the other half was through drilled, but neither was difficult to install. I am also baffled by the inclusion of spring lock washers as they really don't do anything. If I were a high school shop teacher, I might give these welds a C. There are blowouts in the corners, what appear to be cold fusions, weld spatter, and lots of sloppy welds. I suspect their actual strength is sufficient for the use I'll give them, but I'm surprised there isn't better process control for such a product. There are a number of places where threads are used as bearing points for shear loads. This is generally unacceptable in engineering, the sort of thing mentioned in 100 level courses. There are two reasons for this. First, the cross section or diameter of the threaded portion of a fastener is significantly less than the nominal or shaft diameter of the bolt. The thread root diameter for an M16 bolt is around 13.5 millimeters, or 85% of the shaft diameter. That's a 15% reduction just from poor design. The second issue is that the unit pressure or force over the contact area between the thread and the hole in the beams is drastically reduced. Say you have a 3 millimeter, a little less than 1 8 inch thick hole and a solid shaft. You'd have a nominal linear contact of 3 millimeters. If you use the thread of an M16 by 2 bolt, that linear contact becomes 0.5 millimeters nominally, which is about 16% of the original. In inches, imagine going from just shy of an eighth of an inch to around 18 thousandths. This can create issues in both the bolt and the hole. Certainly it can cause the threaded section to wear and deform. I'm not an engineer, nor is this a complete picture of design, but I was surprised to see such an obvious oversight. The poor attention to detail is clear in the assembly instructions, where the bolts holding the struts to the base are inserted from the outside, making the threads bear the shear loads from the strut. However, in the parts diagram, the bolts are inserted the other way, putting the shear stress on the shaft of the bolt, ostensibly the correct way. Another issue is with the fit between the column and the struts. Either the struts are too short or the column base is fabricated at the wrong angle. In order to get all the pieces to fit, the base is slightly tilted, forming a hinge between the column and the base. These are two of the most important components in the system and they have to be forced together to fit. Even then, they barely do. I saw a reviewer that cut the chain to increase the lift height. I found that you can just choke up on the chain and reattach the bolt. At the end of the day, this is perfectly usable in my shop for its intended purpose. 